I've been fascinated by psychoactive drugs my whole life. I love to study their chemistry and impact on society. And my work has allowed me to investigate extraordinary substances around the world. Yet there are still mysteries that remain. If tramadol is found to be of natural origin, would this be the greatest discovery of your career? Yes, absolutely. The story started in uh, 2011. Uh, we hosted one uh, PhD student from Cameroon. At that time, he was working on a plant called Noclea latifolia. In the uh, traditional medicine in Africa, uh, the roots are used for the treatment of many pathologies, including diabetes, malaria, neurological disorders, and also as a pain killer. I was quite excited to investigate this medicinal plant that is used in Cameroon, a natural tree in Africa that is used since maybe centuries. The hope is that you are discovering a new compound that's the reason why you start this project. So you have a traditional plant that's been used for hundreds of years. You have the sample. So then what's the next step? So we ground the roots to get the powder and we mix them with the methanol. But after some work of purification and chemical identification, we identified that tramadol was present in the roots of this plant. Tramadol? Yes. Well, you must have been amazed to have found what was thought to be an entirely artificial synthetic substance. Yes. Something that was thought to have been discovered in a German pharmaceutical company in the 1960s mm -hmm. was also the active principle in a medicinal plant that had been used for generations in West Africa. Yeah, it's a striking finding. When we uh, discovered this compound, and for me, it was a mental, uh, let's say, revolution as a scientist. It means that by pure coincidence, you discover the compound that is man-made and that is present in nature. For me, there was no um, former experience or even in the literature of any kind of similar parallel. So after this research, we decided to publish our work. When we did discover tramadol as a natural product, it was a very provocative demonstration that indeed what we call generally the recipes of the grandmothers, traditional medicine has a value. But that doesn't make sense. It, it is a surface contamination. I was always interested in contamination and um, there was an article in the very well-known journal Angewandte Chemie and one of my friends told me, have a look at this. Of course, uh, when first reading the article, we were also excited, but immediately we had some doubt.
for instance, the amount of tramadol they could detect was 0.4%, and that is an extremely high percentage of the tramadol. So you did find tramadol in nuclear latifolia, but you also found it throughout the environment, yes. evidence that it was not natural. Yes. We found tramadol in very different plants from different genetic origin. It cannot be that um, all of a sudden tramadol is uh, produced by plants from very different origin. It is a surface contamination. Our interpretation of the high concentration was, and we could prove this by interviews with farmers, that tramadol is also given to cows uh, to tolerate the extreme heat in the far north of Cameroon. These uh, animals excreted the tramadol. We found not only the tramadol, but the mammalian metabolites. It's also giving you another hint that the excreta was, uh, in our case, from the uh, cows cows addicted to tramadol. Your interpretation is almost equally strange. You know, for us, all the story was like a crime, yeah? An like exciting crime story. It's certainly an odd claim. If a farmer were to give their cow tramadol with the idea that this would allow them to work harder, then the cow would become addicted to tramadol. Yeah. I guess, yes, a cattle addiction to tramadol. That would be an interesting concept, yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't make economic sense to give them to cattle to resist the heat, at especially high doses. I don't see the logic about it. If it's not cows, how would you explain the detection of tramadol in other plant species that aren't Nauclea latifolia? The trees where we took the samples are full of monkeys, you know, they're just eating the fruits. And their urine can go onto the soil as well. If maybe there is some tramadol in the fruits, and if the monkey eats the tramadol from the fruits, and then they, now they can pollute the soil. OK, there are some monkeys around there, and they like to eat um, fruits like the fruits from uh, Nuclea. But uh, this idea with monkeys is very strange. It's really one of the best science mysteries I've ever encountered. And did you consider the possibility of anthropogenic contamination when you were working on well, the original research? No, to be honest, I still don't consider it. I believe at one point the scientist has to conclude and say, OK, uh, that's the explanation this way or this way. It does seem unlikely to me that tramadol is biosynthesized by plants but it seems almost equally unlikely that it's a product of widespread use by cattle. Have you considered the possibility that maybe you're both wrong? As I would say we are approaching this problem from different sides with different experimental setups, and we couldn't agree upon a common uh, interpretation of the data. We're in a sewer right now. And I imagine that you're familiar with the idea of the Anthropocene, an era dominated by the influence of humans on the environment. As a result of human activity, it's becoming increasingly difficult to define exactly what's natural. Do you think in the future this natural synthetic dichotomy is going to dissolve completely? Yeah. We have polluted the environment with so many chemicals. There are urinary metabolites of cocaine and antidepressants in the municipal water supplies of pretty much every major country. I think we're going to see more and more cases like this in the future as our environment continues to be contaminated. It may even change the biosynthesis of natural products. So I guess, yes, there is an environmental response and adaptation to human activities. Plants, uh, organisms are adapting to the new environment, which is man-made. In Africa, what's amazing is that tramadol is used as, as a drug, as a narcotic drug. Tons of tramadol, maybe from um, India, is imported. The use of tramadol in these high quantities all over Western Africa. 
we head to Cameroon, where the country is facing an opioid crisis. For years, the abuse of tramadol, a painkiller, has gone unchecked by international agencies. Do you think it's a problem? Would you consider taking a boga to stop? Roquet arrive ici, il a dit, maman, aidez-moi, je vous en supplie, euh, je veux sortir de la drogue. La tombe lui a dit, il faut dès aujourd'hui que tu commences à en consommer de l'iboga. L'iboga est une plante qui est venue sauver le monde. La drogue innée, la drogue de Dieu, c'est-à-dire la dépendance, ça va t'enlever l'envie. Je suis habité rien que par de mauvaises pensées. Je suis étudiant en, en droit à l'université Omar Bongo. Ben, ça fait deux ans que j'ai arrêté là-bas. Dès que je finis de prendre, dès que je prends deux comprimés, trois comprimés de tramadol, automatiquement mon esprit change. Et ces pensées, c'est soit de faire du mal à l'autre, soit me faire du mal à moi-même ou encore à mon entourage. Devenir accro au tramadol, lorsqu'on a pris une fois, l'envie finit par s'installer. Because most of the African continent doesn't have a history with opioids, I understand that the introduction of tramadol has been especially difficult. Le tramadol n'est pas bien pour la société. Le tramadol, ce n'est pas fabriqué par nous, ni par notre nature. Ça vient de l'extérieur. Is there a difference between something that is artificial, that is made by humans, and something that is botanical, that occurs as part of nature? Les autres drogues qui sont fabriquées à partir des éléments de la nature n'en agissent pas comme le tramadol. Maintenant, l'Iboka est une drogue innée. 
le père de toutes les drogues. De, on reçoit tous ces cas-là. Quelqu'un qui est venu parce qu'il est devenu alcoolique. L'autre est venu parce que euh, il n'arrive plus à se concentrer. Drogué par le téléphone. Que rester là tous les jours chop, 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 avec le téléphone. Moi, j'ai interdit à mes enfants. Et l'unique chose qui régularise ça, ce n'est que des libora. Iboga est une plante que Dieu nous a donnée. Ici au Gabon, l'iboga pousse. Et ça a des effets vraiment qui sont vraiment très bien. Escargot. Le fruit de, de, de l'iboga. It's like a like a cucumber. It has a cucumber like flavor and texture, I would say. Not not bitter. Or not very bitter at all. Are you ever concerned that all of the aboga might disappear? Boga ne doit pas disparaître. Au Gabon, ça c'est ce que Dieu nous a donné. Donc la connaissance est là-dedans. Si des gens nous demandent de faire disparaître ça, c'est de demander aux Gabonais de disparaître. La vérité, on l'a pas sur le tapis rouge. La vérité, on l'a en mangeant le bois sacré qui est... L'initiation, c'est une nouvelle naissance. Voilà comment j'ai reçu ce que j'ai fait en quatre jours pour l'initier. Ah, c'est pendant quatre jours, de mercredi à dimanche. Vous ne mangez que du boga et vous ne prenez que de l'eau. On commence à vous administrer du boga mercredi. Le jeudi, c'est le jour de sacrifice. Il y a la tombe. Nous enlevons les impuretés de chair. Troisième jour, le vendredi, on vous nettoie. Lavec un canard dans une rivière. Le samedi, on vous lave, on vous habille en blanc. Et vous devez sortir votre première parole. Dimanche, vous avez votre premier repas. Et vous, on peut commencer à vous remettre sur pied. Et je confirme. Liboga, c'est quelque chose qui désenvoûte, qui purifie. Quand la chair, on prend les os. Parce que nous, on appelle pas ça les causes, on appelle l'os de l'iboga. L'iboga fraîchement récolté, qui est en poudre comme celle qu'on a consommée durant les cinq jours de la veillée. Quand vous arrivez dans un temple de Boussy, tout se passe dans les règles et les normes fondamental que Dieu a créé, c'est organisé. Ça ne se fait pas au hasard. Donc nous avons toute cette organisation-là. Le temple est composé normalement de 12 membres. Qui viennent faire l'expérience naturellement. En pas ou grand. Le cas de Reiki, c'est la gros. On 
dit bonsoir à tout le monde et à tous nos invités. Bonsoir. Nous sommes là pour une grande cérémonie. Mon nom d'esprit, c'est moi, le roi David. Je suis le vétéran de ce temple, le chef de village. Je ne suis pas seul. J'ai une épouse qui s'appelle, dit nommée la reine met les eaux spirituellement. Et bonne soirée à tous et bonne guérison pour les malades. Parce que lorsque on initie quelqu'un, il fait au moins cinq jours sans manger quoi que ce soit. On ne lui donne que des liboga et de l'eau. Parce qu'il leur, il leur faut de l'énergie pour pouvoir tenir toute la nuit. Donc, comme tout médicament, il y a la posologie. Les bébés nouveau-nés, il y a des bébés qui sont répartis. Complet. Donc il faut donner d'autres plantes pour permettre à ce qu'il y ait une bonne circulation, pas de blessures. Par exemple, la liane bouillante. Avec les initiations, vous montre votre véritable dessin, vous montre le chemin à suivre. Le bouti est un culte voué au Créateur. Que lorsque les colons arrivent, nous trouvent en train de pratiquer nos cultes. Ils les ont traités de diaboliques. The French colonists opposed the Iboga religion. Why did you incorporate aspects of Christianity into your religion? Chacun de nous agit selon la volonté de Dieu. Tu n'as pas besoin d'aller rester dans l'Église catholique pour dire que tu sers Dieu. Tel que nous avons des caméramens, nous avons des chercheurs, nous avons des journalistes, nous avons des navigateurs, nous avons des cosmologues, nous avons tout dans les bougas. La religion de l'Iboga a eu son commencement en brousse chez les pygmées.
va faire ici. Donc, vendredi, on les réchauffe d'abord pour leur redonner de l'énergie. On va d'abord chauffer les malades. Ce lavage, le but du lavage, c'est d'enlever toutes les impuretés. Donc, ça soigne. La descendre avec l'eau de la rivière était laissée pure. Et cette même terre, si on ne la préserve pas, elle va repartir dans ses eaux. Et puis, on les ramène, on continue le processus d'initiation. Le Asselin Nidam. Cette partie s'appelle la tombe. Rocky est d'abord passé par les deux enfants couchés ici sont constamment malades hospitalisés. Leur maman, elle les a amenés pour soigner. Le jeudi, c'est le jour de sacrifice. Il y a la tombe. Nous enlevons les impuretés de chair. On enterre ses problèmes, on enterre ses difficultés, on enterre ses maladies. Quand il revient le matin, tout ça là est resté dans la tombe. Le samedi. On vous lave, on vous habille en blanc. Vous devez sortir votre première parole. Est-ce qu'un arbre peut rester en vie avec ses branches sans racines pivotantes Puis nous de 
nom de l'iboka en eau là au chien. To dogs. Oui. Au chien. Les chiens. Pour qu'ils soient toujours éveillés, courageux, pour qu'ils puissent surveiller le village. Créer les choses telles que ça a été fait. J'ai toujours donné l'exemple d'une ampoule. L'ampoule qui fait la représentation de Dieu, la grandeur créateur. Mais si vous allez derrière cette ampoule, vous allez vous faire électrocuter. Mais il faut que le monde en sache ce que le bouga peut faire comme éveil. L'initiation nécessite à voir et revoir des choses qu'on ne pouvait voir avec l'œil. C'est pas comme du chanvre, c'est pas comme des cobolos ou encore d'autres drogues comme la cocaïne ou l'héroïne ou je sais pas trop. Il y a vraiment une grande différence entre ces drogues-là et l'ibogaï. Du nord au sud, de l'est à l'ouest, de l'Afrique, l'Europe, l'Asie, l'Amérique, l'Antarctique, l'Océanie. L'Iboga, c'est elle qui va te révéler tout ce qui est en toi. Sérieusement, c'est le cœur qui m'a guidé ici. De pouvoir traverser et de pouvoir voir ce que l'œil nu ne peut pas voir. 
Et Bogaïn, j'ai vu ça comme la chair du Christ. Ça s'est bien passé. J'espère vraiment trouver une belle vie avec ma famille, mes amis, de rentrer à nouveau chez moi. Mais avec l'initiation que je viens de terminer, je suis né à nouveau. Et le fait d'être né à nouveau sous-entend dire par là qu'il faut changer les mauvaises habitudes parce que j'ai perdu déjà beaucoup d'années. Concernant mes, mes études universitaires, c'est vraiment ce que je demande à Dieu, de me permettre de, de pouvoir continuer ce que j'ai laissé avec un bon cœur et avec vraiment beaucoup de détermination. Je sais que ce sera compliqué, mais je suis sûr que ça va aller. an atheist when I was growing up and I became suicidally depressed as a result of my worldview and it wasn't until I attempted suicide that I realized I have to be responsible for my life. And so I tried Ibogaine, and it caused me to question my atheist worldview. The Ibogaine seemed to be used by God to put me in the right place. There are ways that people can seek to know more about God if they want to, and, and one of those ways is to use certain drugs. Unfortunately, Ibogaine has always been endangered, and that caused me to be interested in continuing my research on producing Ibogaine from something that wasn't endangered. Fortunately, in West Africa, there are farms that produce Volkanga trees, and there's already a commercial need for those trees. And so I didn't even have to wild harvest to obtain a semi-pure form of ibogaine that's perfectly usable in addiction treatment. So the purpose of this is sustainability? Yes, it was for the sake of the iboga shrub and for the sake of people who need ibogaine, because if iboga goes, then so does its alkaloids. This is a bag of Volkanga bark that came from Ghana. The first step is to take the powdered bark and extract them with uh, dilute acid. And this bark contains a great deal of alkaloid. It's about 15% by weight in alkaloids. The bark is filtered through cloth. I came up with a different method, a low-tech method, something that would be within the reach of people without a lot of chemical training. The total alkaloids are precipitated with ammonia, which make it basic and filtered through very large coffee filter paper. So as you can see, this is quite, quite wet. What would you say to somebody that told you that the Ibogaine that you produce is not real Ibogaine? It's fundamentally different from the Boga-derived Ibogaine. Ibogaine that's created using Volkanga, scientifically they're the same substance and they would be undistinguishable. And the pure substance is the pure substance regardless of how you got there. So at that point you may as well realize that it doesn't matter which plant they come from, they're equally beneficial. So you don't think there could be any detectable difference between the botanical Ibogaine and synthetically produced Ibogaine? Questions like this kind of, it, it seems like a mixture of spiritual beliefs and, and scientific ones. I do have a spiritual system of beliefs that is separate from a scientific set of beliefs, but it's like the difference between believing something when you're in dreaming and believing something when you're awake. It's, there, there's no connection between the two, and trying to mire the two in these, in these debates, is, is, I just see it as unproductive.
the alkaloid is dried and powdered and extracted with straight vinegar. And I'm pouring it into an emulsion of 100 milliliters of toluene to extract the volcanogene out of this with the toluene. I'm hydrochloric acid to extract the volcanogene that this toluene contains. This is hexane. 0.4 grams of sodium acetate mixed with vinegar. So there's our product. We're going to separate the volcanogene from everything that likes to precipitate from acetone. Now I'm going to add hydrochloric acid to precipitate the impurities from the volcanogene. Yellow precipitate. And drop it in. So this crystalline volcanogene is converted to ibogaine by refluxing it in alcohol and potassium hydroxide. This is the petroleum naphtha extract of Boa recovered alkaloid. There's a couple large seed crystals. And drop those in. So this crystalline volcanogene is converted to ibogaine by refluxing it in potassium hydroxide in alcohol, and that gives ibogaine as a pure compound available for other people to use, treating addiction of various kinds. I was speaking with scientists who were debating the possibility of widespread use of tramadol by cattle. And if that's truly occurring, do you think that a cow would consume iboga? Is it treatment for their addiction? Well, it seems like a much different problem than we have with people because the cattle aren't giving themselves tramadol. It's being given to them. So I would think that the thing that needs to change is the administration of tramadol to the cattle. But I suppose it, if it works in rats and people, that Ibogaine would probably treat addiction in cattle as well. Yes.